What it do, cuckolds? It's your boy, the hater. And it's time for an, a now tradition of the Raw Review. I watched Raw, um, obviously skipping the commercials and other bullshit. But we will talk about it uh, in its entirety. I actually took some notes, so I don't need to look at the results. All right. First up, the show starts. Rollins comes out dressed like a referee, but gay, right? There is literally no reason to gay up the referee costume. This was very strange. Why does this guy do this, right? It's never been explained. He's basically this like random person who just dresses like a woman all the time. And then he just took the referee costume and made it flamboyant and gay for no reason. Like the referee position is supposed to be serious, right? And sometimes people, when they're like presented as being stupid, like Mick Foley, they'll do it a little bit different. But generally speaking, the referee position is supposed to be sacred. So Seth Rollins doing doing this implies that he's not going to take it seriously. This is very strange and very weird. The segment is a colossal, a mastodonic waste of time because nothing happens. Drew McIntyre comes out and CM Punk comes out. They talk for like 10 minutes, but nothing is said. Nothing has been established any further. Just that Seth Rollins is going to you know, play it loose with the rules. With that being said, now we've got a match over a bracelet. Um, they can't touch each other, otherwise the match is off. And Seth Rollins being referees explained by like the referees being afraid, which is which is retarded, right? It's just stupid. It's fucking stupid. Like the referees are not are not afraid when it's like you know uh, Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt, but they're afraid when it's Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins, even though they haven't really attacked any referees. Nevertheless, fine. It is what it is, right? Um, at a certain point. Because they can't touch each other, Drew McIntyre holds the bracelet um, towards CM Punk's face. And CM Punk reacts like as if this guy just pulled out like, like his heart, right? It's a piece of shit, cheap-looking bracelet. Get another one, motherfuck. It's like a $3 bracelet. Get another one. For some reason, this bracelet has this value that it shouldn't have. It's just a bracelet with, the, with Larry and AJ in little beads. You can have this made in like... 10 minutes at a bead factory or wherever the hell you make these things. You can make it yourself. It's cheap. It's nothing to, to write home about. Can't base a feud over this, right? They're treating this like those feuds that we had with Kurt Angle and like Eddie Guerrero or Angle and Stone Cold over the gold medals, which are, you know, gold medals, right? This is not that. This is a bullshit uh, little bracelet. And in my opinion, I am not looking forward to this at all anymore. I don't care, right? Uh, next up, we have the Creed brothers. They beat Otis and Tozawa. Uh, in like a mid-level match, nothing crazy here. Uh, the part that stuck out was they do like a double back suplex from the top rope to Otis and pin him with that, which is kind of lame. Um, but Tozawa was just there. He could easily break the pin, but he doesn't, right? I think he was selling like, like he tripped, but the timing was awful. So it's like Tozawa didn't break the pin. He easily could have, right? After the match, the Creeds and Chad Gable start attacking everybody, right? Chad Gable goes towards Maxine, who wants to fight him, right? Um, the implications are he's going to destroy her. But of course, what happens is the Wyatt Six come, come out, just like they've done for the past two or three episodes, and the same thing happens as every other week. The only difference is that the three jobbers and Nikki Cross attack the Creeds, and they unmask. They do Uranagis, right, to the Creed brothers, and then uh, Gacy power bombs Loomis on top of them, while uh, Rowan eventually has a cross body on them, right? The fans chant, holy shit, as if they saw something special, but everybody knows they didn't. Next up, we have Sheamus versus Bronson Reed. Complete waste of time. Um, basically, they're wrestling. Pete Dunne attacks Sheamus with a shillelagh, and Bronson Reed hits the tsunami, which I like, and wins. The tsunami is cool because it's a top rope splash, but he does it on one foot, if you notice. Like, he climbs, like... He puts one foot on the top rope, and then he pushes off that foot and doesn't put the other foot on the top rope. So it's like almost like this, not a springboard splash, obviously, but it's like this, you know, thrusting splash where he like uses the distance between his knee and his heel to spring up off of it. And it just looks more devastating. It's like one fluid motion. I really enjoyed that. But that's about it. Then we have Jey Uso beating Carlito with a spear. This was boring. The spear looked great. But Carlito, it was like a 50-50 match. Even though Carlito is a clear jobber. And Jey Uso is supposed to be this like main event Jey Uso. It was really dumb. Then we have another Karrion Cross Xavier Wood, uh, Woods uh, situation. Where Karrion Cross asked him to join for no reason whatsoever. He makes fun of Kofi Kingston. They have a match. Cross wins after interference. And he hits the final prayer. Cole, Michael Cole, asks if Woods is getting worn down. 
<laughs> which is an indicator as to how shit this feud has been. I am getting worn down seeing this week after week. It's the same thing. Every week for like three or four weeks, Karrion Cross asks one of these jobbers, do you want to join? They say no, then he beats them, right? I don't care if they join at this point, right? Because my question is, why didn't they join before? He has to beat them three times. That's the magic number. You know, I don't care, and I don't care where this, this match ends. I believe everyone involved, including Woods, should be released. Next up, um, Sami Zayn cuts like one of the great promos of all time if we're measuring promos, but how shit they are. This was an atrocious backstage promo. He doesn't know what he's saying. He's stumbling his words. He exposes himself as the jobber that he is and the complete lucky case of him having a career. It's not since French Montana had a successful rap career that this made me scratch my head more. How does this guy have a job? It is unbelievable. Apparently, he tries to put over some comedy show that he's doing, and there is a 0% chance that Sami Zayn is a funny guy. He probably does some woke comedy bullshit that nobody cares about, and this is the only way to get people to go there. Obviously, just like Dolph Ziggler. People go there because they want to see Sami Zayn. Nobody gives a fucking fuck about his comedy. You know what I'm saying? He's not interesting. He's not a good storyteller. He's boring in all ways. He wrestles Dominic, but absolutely nothing happens, and nobody gives a rat's ass. Next up, we have the Sonya Deville team. Uh, they beat uh, Chance, Carter, and Lyra Valkyria, who continues to be pushed down our throat. I hate her. She is bad. I don't like her at all. There's a part... Where Sonya Deville gets on the apron and she just falls. She just takes a bump on the apron because Katana Chance was supposed to do something. She doesn't. Sonya Deville doesn't know what the fuck wrestling is. So she just pretends that she got hit when she didn't, right? Um, this is total garbage. Zoe Stark hits the little Zoe move, whatever, the little spitting, you know, the feast your eyes essentially. And after this, damage control comes out for no reason and attacks the uh, Sonya Deville group, right? I guess to assert their dominance as the more dominant three-man, or three-woman, I should say, team on Raw. There's no reason why they're attacking each other. I don't understand why, but quite frankly, I don't particularly give a rat's ass as to why, so nobody cares. Then we, we go to a promo by Gunther in an empty arena. I, I really want everyone who didn't watch this promo, and that likes Gunther, to find this promo and go watch it. There is no doubt, after you watch this promo, that you will agree to the fact that Gunther has zero charisma, he has zero presence, and his entire presentation is lackluster. This guy does not feel even like a mid-carder. This guy feels like a Kozlov, lesser than Kozlov, if you ask me. The entire gunther Damien Priest feud is based on the premise that Damien Street is from the streets, and Gunther finds this to be disrespectful to wrestling, whereas Damien Priest finds this to be exciting and a badge of badge of honor because he's a badass puerto rican this is basically creating a feud where there is none right you don't need to create a feud but gunther is butthurt because he's like i'll never forgive you for what you've done to this great sport what has he done gunther also buries finn balor with facts this part i did enjoy because as finn balor used to be one of the best wrestlers in the world and now he's a street trash jobber but the the promo wasn't exciting However, Gunther does wrestle in this match, uh, in this uh, episode, so that's a little bit exciting, so we're going to see what happens. And we move on to the main event. Now, the main event is basically one half of the tag team champions in Finn Balor versus the former Intercontinental Champion. In other words, this would be as if you had like a, a Raw main event back in the day between Scotty Tuhati and D'Lo Brown, and we're supposed to take this as a legitimate main event. This opening match, quality match, was also garbage, separately from this, right? Balor is presented as a 50-50 guy who Gunther can barely beat. Now, I've talked ad nauseum about how Gunther has one of the worst power bombs in the history of power bombs. I have talked ad nauseum about how Gunther has undisputably the worst top rope splash in the history of top rope splashes. But he has a third move, and that is the sleeper hold. I beg you, if you like Gunther, go watch this match and the finish where he beats Finn Balor with literally the two, because he does it twice at least, right? He has two sleeper holds. They are the two worst sleeper holds 
in the history of sleeper holds. It's one thing if he screwed up one, but he hit us with the worst sleeper hold of all time, and then he beat his own record with the new worst sleeper hold of all time. He was applying zero pressure, which goes to show that this guy doesn't know how to wrestle, right? The, the narrative that Gunther is a good in-ring worker is horseshit. Now, a friend of mine was telling me that apparently Gunther is good at running a match, right? That's what the, what the logic is, right? You can call a match and have a 35-minute match. However, every wrestler should have this skill, and this is a skill that we cannot measure, so I don't know, right? But what I do see is this guy has three or four moves, and literally, I'm not even exaggerating at this point, three of his main moves, the top rope splash, the power bomb, and the sleeper, by the way, these are moves that you could, you could do on WWE SmackDown 1, right? These are like the most basic-ass moves. That game had like 50 moves. Like three of them were these. They had the finishers. They had a top rope elbow, a few other things, a DDT. You know, these are regular-ass moves. And this guy does them worse than anyone else. Again, I reiterate, the worst power bomb, the worst top rope splash by far, and easily the worst sleeper hold of all time. In other words, if we judge Gunther by the totality of the circumstances, we know that Gunther has absolutely nothing going for him. People like him, but they shouldn't. This is a clear-cut case. Zero charisma. Zero presence. No aesthetic appeal because he's skinny fat. And he was better when he was fat, if you ask me. Right? No in-ring talent. No personality. What does this cocksucker bring to the table? Why is he better than Jack Gallagher? Or literally any other wrestler that has ever wrestled for the WWE. I need to do another rant on Gunther because this guy is just the absolute worst. So, in the aggregate, this Raw, in my personal opinion, gets a rare score of 0 out of 10. Absolutely do not watch aside from the reasons that I gave. This was one of the worst Raws of all time for two reasons. One, the same things happened as last week. And the only thing that was different was Gunter wrestling, and the match was garbage. In addition to this, we also have a scenario where um, the other part of Raw that is in interesting, the Liv Morgan part, was not really addressed. Liv Morgan trashed the, the clubhouse, which isn't even a thing. Like, they're like, everybody's like, we can fix the clubhouse. What do you mean fix the clubhouse? It's like one t-shirt hanging on a wall is your fucking clubhouse. This is like a joke by all metrics. Also, what do you mean fix it, right? It's not, it's not your arena, right? It's not, you don't actually have a clubhouse, you weird fucks. So with that being said, this match, in my opinion, I mean, this segment, in my opinion, didn't advance the story at all, right? They clearly miscalculated. The long-term booking should have been that Dominic does what he did last week, this week. So then the next logical step is SummerSlam. But we had one more week between SummerSlam and nothing happened. So now I don't give a shit anymore. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to watch SummerSlam, but I'm pretty much watching on the hope that the big dog, Roman Reigns, comes up. I, otherwise, I could give a rat's ass about this SummerSlam. You dig?